Fasting for rheumatoid arthritis, does it help and is it sustainable? That's the question we're gonna be diving into today. We'll be discussing various fasting methods such as water fast, intermittent fasting, one meal a day, and the pros and cons of ketosis. Hi, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasri, a surgeon who specializes in reversing complex inflammation naturally using the MindGut Immunity Method. We've refined our methodology over the past 12 years and have helped thousands of patients recover. We look at conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis and solve the root cause. And as you know by now from the hundreds of research papers on the topic, the gut microbiome plays a significant role in the modulation of the immune response in rheumatoid arthritis. If you want to find out how we fix these issues, schedule a discovery call with me and I'll provide you with some helpful tips to get started. Here are a few studies that describe fasting in the setting of rheumatoid arthritis. Here's a 2024 paper that studied the effects of intermittent fasting on quality of life, clinical symptoms, inflammation, and oxidative stress in women with rheumatoid arthritis. Here's a 2021 study on the efficacy of therapeutic fasting in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. I'll break down these studies on fasting, but I'll also offer personal insights on how fasting plays out over the long term for people with RA. To start, it's important to understand that 80% of your immune system resides in the gut. This area is called mucosa associated lymphatic tissue, or MALT for short. MALT harbors trillions of immune cells that react to what's inside your intestine. So what's in there? Primarily food and microbes which include bacteria, fungi, and viruses. These microbes digest food and create secondary and tertiary metabolites, which then can trigger an immune response. And this is why it's crucial to not only eat the right kinds of foods, but also maintain a healthy and balanced microbiome to address autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. Take a look at my other video titled Ideal Diet for Rheumatoid Arthritis, which I've linked in the description below. In that video, I discuss the four criteria I use to evaluate whether a diet works or not. I'm a strong proponent of the phytonutrient diet or phyto diet that we use extensively in the clinic for rheumatoid arthritis patients with great success. When combined with precision microbiome recalibration, many of our patients experience rapid symptom relief, often within weeks. I encourage you to check out that video so that you can better understand why phytonutrients are such an essential component of managing RA. Now, the four criteria I use to evaluate whether any dietary approach works, including fasting, are phytonutrient density and diversity, macronutrient requirements, microbiome specificity, and food sensitivity. If you're curious about why these factors matter, check out that video I told you about ideal diet for rheumatoid arthritis. I'll also give you a quick recap here so you don't have to switch back and forth videos. Phytonutrient density and diversity. Phytonutrients are powerful micronutrients that help reduce inflammation in the body. Numerous studies have emphasized the role of phytonutrients in managing rheumatoid arthritis. Here's a 2022 study about natural components used in rheumatoid arthritis treatment like flavonoids, polyphenols, alkaloids, glycosylides, and terpenes and its action and mechanism. Here's another 2022 study on the role of polyphenols and their potential as RA treatment due to their antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and immunoregulatory properties. The study also describes phytonutrients in their ability to modulate key inflammatory pathways. And here's a 2021 study that investigates the effectiveness of antioxidants found in food supplements in reducing oxidative stress in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Phytonutrients are molecular compounds found primarily in plants and fungi, they have a strong positive impact on human health. These include terms that you've probably heard like superfoods, micronutrients, and antioxidants. Research consistently shows that supplementing your diet with phytonutrients can help alleviate symptoms of joint pain and rheumatoid arthritis. Phytonutrients are divided into several categories, terpenes, phenols, chlorophyll, thiocyanates, phytoenzymes, phytooils, prebiotics, and alkaloids. While there are smaller groups like betalanes from beets and hericinone from mushrooms, Focusing on these eight categories will cover most of your phytonutrient needs. Deficiencies in these essential nutrients can disrupt the mind-gut immune connection, making it harder to manage inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. The goal should be to maximize and optimize intake of phytonutrients from everyday foods. And by maximize and optimize, I mean increasing both the diversity and density of phytonutrients in your diet, which is critical for maintaining overall health in rheumatoid arthritis. A diet low in phytonutrients makes it more difficult to overcome rheumatoid inflammation. When it comes to fasting, we often aren't getting sufficient phytonutrients or sometimes none at all. 
You might feel better temporarily when there's less food in your digestive system, but the lack of phytonutrients means your immune system isn't getting the regulation it needs. And this is why symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis tend to return once fasting ends. One suggestion I have is to incorporate herbal teas if you're planning a water fast for several days or intermittent fasting with a six or eight hour window. Herbal teas provide phytonutrients like polyphenols and terpenes, which help reduce inflammation without adding any calories. Next, macro requirements for rheumatoid arthritis arthritis. Macro is short for macronutrients. These are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, all of which the body needs to function properly. I've got a tool on my website called the Macro Calculator, which can help you figure out your body's maintenance requirements based on factors like height, weight, age, gender, and activity level. It's important to understand that these macronutrient estimates are based on ideal physiologic functioning. However, when fasting, you won't be getting these nutrients in the long term, or at best, you'll be getting them in reduced amounts. Let's take a look at the different types of fasting. First, you have water fasts, which are 24, 48, or 72 hours, or even up to five to 14 days. You have total caloric restriction, which is consuming fewer than 800 to 1,000 calories per day. You also have intermittent fasting, which is eating within a six, eight, 10, or 12 hour window. And you can have one meal a day, or OMAD, consuming all of your calories in just one meal. Whichever fasting method you choose, the underlying benefit comes from ketosis, in ketosis, your body stops using carbohydrates for fuel and instead relies on stored fat and muscle for energy instead. Supporters of fasting also highlight the process called autophagy when your body cleans up old or damaged cells, which is anti-inflammatory in nature. But here's the problem. While fasting strategies may temporarily relieve psoriasis symptoms, they almost always return. So what happens the second time or the third time or over the long term if you keep fasting? When the symptoms return, eating can become more challenging. You might feel bloated, lethargic, or low energy after meals. These symptoms can make it hard to return to eating properly, creating a vicious cycle that's difficult to break, especially if you're underweight. A body mass index BMI of 18 or lower can be particularly concerning for people with rheumatoid arthritis. And you can easily calculate your BMI using the BMI calculator on our clinic's website. If your BMI is below 18, that's a serious issue. And I've treated patients with BMIs as low as 13, which is quite severe. When someone with rheumatoid arthritis has a low BMI, it means that their body is in a catabolic state, breaking down protein rather than building it up, which can slow down healing. Many of these patients struggle to tolerate food and need careful coaching to reintroduce it into their diets to successfully manage rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. The reason I emphasize this is because the solution to a dysfunctional gut microbiome in rheumatoid arthritis should never involve avoiding food or stopping eating entirely, even if fasting makes your joints feel better in the short term. Trust me, I used to fast myself, so I understand the appeal, but instead of avoiding food, focus on reducing inflammation first, then resume normal eating habits. When I made this change and when my patients did, the results were far more sustainable. Unfortunately, many people with rheumatoid arthritis have given up on finding the right diet and may avoid eating food altogether. Here's a recent study that shows how intermittent fasting for prolonged periods of time can increase the risk of cardiac death. Furthermore, if you have rheumatoid arthritis and have caloric restriction for long periods of time, and we're talking over several days, weeks, and months of intermittent fasting, various issues can arise. You'll have weight loss and muscle wasting, thyroid dysfunction, cortisol and sympathetic endocrine dysfunction, sleep disturbances, protein calorie malnutrition, which impedes wound healing and inflammation control. You can have nausea, reflux, and a feeling of fullness and decreased appetite, and severe intermittent fatigue. These are the reasons I emphasize that the solution to a dysfunctional gut microbiome in rheumatoid arthritis should never be to stop eating or avoid food altogether. Instead, the focus should be on reducing inflammation first and then reducing to a normal balanced diet. Unfortunately, many people struggling with RA have given up on finding the ideal diet and may resort to avoiding food, which only worsens the problem. If you're trying to determine the ideal macronutrient balance for managing RA, the key is to focus on fats, carbs, and proteins. To help reduce inflammation, I recommend that around 50% of daily calories come from fats, while carbohydrates and proteins make up about 25%. The reason carbohydrates should comprise a smaller portion of the diet, especially at first, is because harmful gut bacteria, and candida in particular, thrive on sugar. They love carbs. And if your microbiome is already imbalanced and already compromised, 
feeding it sugar will only make the problem worse because you have bad bacteria and funguses paired with sugar, carbs, and fiber, which leads to inflammation not only in the gut, but also in the joints and the rest of the body. Simple sugars like glucose and fructose can stimulate the growth of both harmful bacteria and fungi. Similarly, simple starches such as those found in flour can lead to bacterial and fungal overgrowth in rheumatoid arthritis. This observation comes from my extensive experience working with thousands of patients rather than any specific scientific study. If your goal is to lose weight and you have rheumatoid arthritis, you may need to reduce both carbohydrates and fats even further while increasing your protein intake and lowering overall calories. On the other hand, if you're trying to gain weight, then you'll wanna increase your total caloric intake and adjust your carb to fat ratio for a more balanced approach. Tracking your macronutrients can help you achieve your desired health goals. It takes effort, but it's well worth it for rheumatoid recovery. This approach not only improves your diet, but also contributes better to long-term health. So just to recap, the criteria I use to judge whether a rheumatoid arthritis diet will work for reversing the inflammation long-term in patients are the following. Phytonutrient focused, meeting nutritional requirements, microbiome specific, and avoiding food sensitivity. As I mentioned earlier, feel free to check out some of my other videos or refer to the description below for additional resources. You'll find links to the body mass calculator, a guide to the different types of phytonutrients needed to manage rheumatoid arthritis, a macronutrient calculator to determine your daily carbs, fats, and protein needs, and a fiber and starch guide to help you avoid carbohydrates that can worsen gut microbiome dysfunction. As I mentioned before, I help my clients formulate their diets based on these principles, and they tend to do quite well. The severity of their symptoms often decreases significantly in a short period of time. Many of them are able to reduce or even completely stop their medications and live longer, healthier, more fulfilling lives free of joint pain and free of rheumatoid arthritis. I'm a strong advocate of the Phyto diet for rheumatoid arthritis, which I use routinely for my RA clients. It is an effective diet for recalibrating the gut microbiome and addressing issues related to phytonutrient deficiency in RA. This diet also helps avoid food sensitivities while meeting long-term nutritional needs. For those of you who are under eating, this typically means increasing your food intake, specifically eating more food that will not only help you gain healthy weight, but also heal inflammation the right way. By following this approach, you can avoid many of the negative consequences of long-term under eating. Reversing the effects of fasting can be hard work, but with the right plan, it's absolutely possible. Okay, one last thing. I would love to hear your thoughts below. Comment on the types of foods that exacerbate your rheumatoid symptoms and inflammation, and what have you done to avoid them? And finally, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and be sure to share this video with someone that you think it'll help. This is Dr. Chanu Dasri with the MindGut Immunity Clinic, and I'll see you next time.